We're Dirty Gaming and Regilod back at it again. This time the 128 gigabyte image still can hold 14,000 titles, you know, for like 30, 40 plus systems, all sorts of good stuff. Uh, they released the 200 gig, they released the ROM pack, they released a base image, and now it's time for the 128. One hundred twenty-eight gigabyte RetroPie four point four, and some of the highlights on this image is you call it the bells and whistles because it has everything from an updated Chromium. Uh, it has a jukebox, and the jukebox was fixed on here. Steam ports, and then uh, and all of that. If you go to setup here, you're gonna find one of the most comprehensive scripts around not to mention one of the most updated attract modes a lot of people running a track mode are running the stock attract mode this one's running a modified hyper pi 2 so it's kind of a um uh optimized hyper pi is how they're proposing it um because it's a little faster but you still get those video those full screen or almost full screen videos that are uh, really beautiful for the categories as well. You can do nested system, all sorts of really cool stuff. We'll have a look at that later in the video. Here we are on the Blu-ray theme. Um, you can add any themes you want. It's, it, can, it can put them on there. And as I mentioned, 14,377 titles on here. Um, the difference between the 128 and the 200, there's probably going to be a little bit less CD games. I'm sure they're still going to try to pack as many uh, consoles, handhelds, and computer systems as possible. So loading screens on here, we're going to play a little uh, SNES hacks. There are some hacked games on here for a lot of the consoles, especially Nintendo and the Sega consoles. So about this image, as I mentioned, they released a base image. They released a 256 gigabyte ROM pack. Um, looks like they have the bezel project installed on here as well as we're seeing right now. Um, so, and then they have, I mean, I, I might, I don't know. I haven't been able to confirm this, but, uh, they probably do have the biggest script library out of any, out of any image I've seen. Uh, we'll show you those in just a little while when we get out of this game. But um, as you see here, we're running a, a generic Super Nintendo um, bezel because this is a hack game. So the bezel project wouldn't have made a uh, custom a custom bezel for this particular game. Maybe they got to add that to your list. No, they really don't. Um, I think I've played this game before and I always die there. I think I need to either get a little bit more speed or use some nitrous or something. Um, so one of the biggest script libraries out there. Uh, they they claim biggest systems and collections support. I mean, there's probably going to be some collections where people might have a little bit more, but for sure it's massive. Uh, they were one of the first ones where Dirty Gaming was one of the first ones to have the largest um, the largest um, 32 gigabyte image. So you know, I wouldn't be too surprised. Okay, all right, I did it that time. So that time I just hit back on my controller, and I think that just adds a little bit more lift. So there we go, that's what you gotta do. Um, the other thing that was fixed, that was not fixed on the previous one, is the jukebox. You had to download a separate RAR file, extract a file, and install it. And it seems that on this particular image that has now been fixed, which is great, I know a lot of people don't like, they like things working out of the box. And uh, so now we got this working out of the box. As I mentioned, Chromium, the reason why Chromium is cool is um, you can watch Netflix on your Raspberry Pi. A lot of people don't like to install Chromium because you have to like, you have to go into the code and then type, you know, through terminal. So that's all set up for you as well. Um, huge scum VM, PC games, all sorts of really fun titles there that a lot of images don't spend a lot of time on. They usually spend most of their time on the consoles and the handhelds. So if you're into PC games or PC based systems like, you know, the Atari ST or the Commodore 64, things like that, um, you know, you're, you're going to be in for some love there. And then as we're playing right now, you're also going to get those hack games. So we'll have a look at the games library in just a moment. Uh, but first I need to kill these computers here because, uh, got to give them some sort of challenge. So this game does rubber band, so even if I, 
you can see I'm doing pretty good. <gasps> All I, I had one job. I had one job. <laughs> I, that was literally like one corner away. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. I'm keeping that in the video. Just to show you my frustrations. Um, some other really cool things is there's a lot of uh, light gun games on here as well. Um, so before you get into the light gun games, though, you can see here, look at all this. You got all the, you know, the, the systems that you need to possibly get into the emulator for and make setting changes. Background music, it comes pre-installed with some. You can change it, turn it off really easily. Bezel project pre-installed for you. So this is different than Motion Blue version 6. This literally gives you a bezel for every single game for for not every single game, but like 90% of the games for 90% of the catalogs. This is standard, standard. This is supposedly pre-installed, so you don't even have to run the script. Your Dreamcasting and Time Fix should be already installed. Easy Hacks Toolkit, you, if you haven't seen this before, it's awesome. Thank you to Easy Hacks. If you are gonna put an Amtrak light gun or a Zinmo controller, this is really cool because it's a just a one-click script. You don't have to go out and find any scripts. So if you're running a Zinmo Arcade or the Amtrak light gun, boom you're done um, if you want to add an external hard drive instead of a micro SD you can do that add some more games the jukebox configuration GPA was shut down if you want to add a, a switch to your uh, case you already have the script ready for you uh, launching screens these are running the launching videos pre-installed for you so I think that's really cool you got the media removal utility which is the extra utility does not come stock with RetroPie overclock you got seven different overclock settings here guys so if you're running a case if you're running advanced cooling as you see here you have three for the Raspberry Pi 3 which is the 1.2 gigahertz and you have th four for the Raspberry Pi 3B plus you go up to 15 1.575. Uh, my suggestion is uh, 1.3 for for the average person, and then I mean 1. Point f yeah, 1.5. I would go 1.5. Like one 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 gigahertz over is probably fine. So I'm gonna run no overclock here. I'm just gonna exit. I'm gonna leave it at nothing, and so it doesn't change any scripts. All that does is it changes your config.txt file. Fairly simple. Then you have bezels to get into advanced bezel settings, net play uh, reference to reference any of your uh, RetroPie information. Uh, reset utility, pretty cool. RetroPie video loading screens, so that's what's running right now, video loading screens. Um, this is all Steam configuration for streaming Steam. Switch uh, Mega Drive to Genesis, so if you prefer Mega Drive instead of Sega Genesis. Same system, just different... Um, demographic you know change that out system info to tell you like a little bit about your pie and kind of what's going on about it and so there you go there's my temps uh i have this on a 256 gigabyte sd card uh talking about size and then you have the team zt installer which allows you to add roms really easily uh, speaking about size this one is 118 gigabytes but i've been told that they are going to re-release this image because it's a little too big in my mind a lot of people are going to have issues with it so right now it's 118 gigs at 127 billion 503 uh, million bytes and uh, that might change soon so stay tuned for that they um the, all, whenever that happens i'm sure they'll comment on this video or i'll update the description um something else i want to point out with the, that goes with the last scripts is that aim track light gun if you are going to play light gun they have their own little light gun collection here which i haven't seen on a lot of images so that's really cool that they went through and they got a lot of these games that are awesome i loved playing these games lethal enforcers area 51 uh the jurassic park gun game all these games were awesome, awesome fun. And uh, if you can get the light gun working, really, really cool, uh, really cool to have as well. Okay, so it has Daphne, it has a lot, lot more. Let's just go through exactly what it has. It's t fully loaded. Like I said, bells and whistles from huge collections, updated scripts, massive coll uh, script collections, packing it in, game bezels, multimedia, like the jukebox, you're gonna see that a little bit later, awesome stuff. Atari 2600, 648, 7800, 58, Atari Lynx 76, Wonderswan Color 84, PC Engine 274, TurboGrafx 16, 94, CD, you got five, pretty standard five, Super Graphics, you got five, pretty standard five. 
uh, Nintendo Game Watch 55, Virtual Boy 24, Game Boy 565, and these do have those really awesome bezels. So it's not going to stretch out your theme, your um, your screen. It's going to be nice and compact. This is my favorite way of playing these portable systems. This is going to work on Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. They're not going to look the exact same, but they're going to take up a similar real estate on your screen. As you see here, high definition bezels, the game fits right in there. So I really like that. That's a little feature that I like. Game Boy Hacks 19, so some games you may not have heard of. Try them out. New Pokemon games to try out. New Mario games to try out. Game Boy Color 535. Game Boy Advance 1022. That's a lot right there. You could probably slim that down if you want. Hacks on the Game Boy Advance. So a lot more Pokemon, Metroid, Yoshi's Island. Nintendo DS 181. That's pretty cool that on the 128, they're still able to fit all these Nintendo DS games. There's a lot of great games for Nintendo DS, Mario Kart, uh, Metroids, Need for Speeds, Pokemons. You know, the list goes on and on and on. So really cool there. Uh, I believe on my last video, I didn't show everything that was in here. So if you guys want to see that, Bomberman, Call of Duty, FIFA, Lego. Those Lego games are a lot of fun. Uh, Metal Slug 7, Pokemon, SimCity, Sonic Classic, Spider-Man, SpongeBob, Star Wars, Tetris, Legend of Zelda, Tiger Woods, Top Gun, Top Spin, and down to the bottom here. All right. Nintendo 791, Nintendo Hacks, you get six of them. Super Nintendo 787, Super Nintendo Hacks 37. So some fun games. Brutal Mario, if you want to get frustrated. Nintendo 64, 293, that's pretty much all of them. On the Raspberry Pi 3 B+, we're seeing a lot better Nintendo 64 performance. And then with that overclock, you should see some pretty nice stuff. Game Gear, 249. Similar with the other portables, you should have a nice bezel there. Hacks, you got four. Sonic Drift, cool little game. Wow, nice to see that they got video snaps for these, uh, for the hack games. That's cool. A lot of times hack games don't have video snaps. SG-1068, Master System, two, system 271, 81, Sega, uh, Mega Drive. So I could switch this to Genesis really easily with that script. 784, hacks, 192. So loaded with the Genesis hacks, 32X, 36. Sega CD, 13. So this is where they're saving a little bit of space here. But they still have the Terminator, still have NBA Jam. So still some good games. Dreamcast, uh, Crazy Taxi, Dead or Live, Sonic Adventure, Soul Calibur, uh, Physic Force, and then Power Stone. Neo Geo Pocket Color 40, Neo Geo 146, Minis 293. So there's no PSP on here. That's saving some space. PlayStation only 71. You can definitely see some, uh, place, some 128 gigabyte images having more PlayStation games. So this one's definitely taking a little less there, which is fine. Um, to conserve space for some other systems. This really is um, a Craig Classics 2361. So this is going to be all your CPS 1, 2, and 3s, Final Burn Alpha, and main games all in one. Um, come on. There we go. And uh, huge, huge collections. What I was going to say about this image is... Um, that it is kind of, and then you have left Staffney games. You're going to find a few more on the 200 gigabyte. Light guns, as I was showing you earlier. Commodore 64, 147. CPC, 3277. So there are some files here that you need two files for, things like that. So it's not actually that many games. There's a little bit less than that. MSX 567, MSX 283. PC games. So really cool. Some DOS box for you guys. A lot of pinball. Uh... Actually, it's all pinball. So if you want some pinball, look no further. Scum VM 13. So a way smaller Scum VM on this one than the 200 gigabyte, which is fine. You still got a laser suit, Larry. And uh, Monkey Island, Day of the Tentacle, Atlantis. Z Machine, you got Zorks. Ports are just these three here. I'll show you the uh, jukebox. Stream, Steam lets you... St uh, stream from your computer and then of course Cody power shutdown and that's all we got here you also can add your favorites and your last played I've enabled those um, as I was mentioning this this is a this is a image for everything it's like a if you want as much as you could stuff in an image look no further let's go ahead and check out a track mode all right so here we are in a track mode and uh, as you can see you have beautiful videos here i'm running the stock clock really nice stuff 
Uh, what I wanted to show in here, oh, extra, what's an extras? It must be like Cody and Chromium, yeah. Cody, and then you got your jukebox and your Steam. So that's cool that they added that in there. And then settings, you still have access to all of your scripts. So everything you had access to in RetroPie, you still have access to in a track mode. It's always been something a little bit, you know, people would take this out to have a more simpler track mode, but then you'd have to like launch into um, terminal or back to emulation station to make any kind of edits whatsoever. So that's cool. And then in addition to that, you can go into the consoles here and then within consoles, you have these beautiful full screen videos. So PlayStation, Sega Master System, Sega Dreamcast, Neo Geo, back to PlayStation, Mega Drive, and if you click in, you have a rec you can actually go into the game list and then launch a game. I accidentally hit A twice there, so we went ahead and we launched a game, which is good. We could see that it works, and we could see the bezel on here as well. And uh, it's beautiful, right? It's a really beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. All right, so that works. Going to start and select it back out. So we're playing arcade classics on the Genesis. And as you see, same thing, you got a, a, a menu here, video snaps, it changes the categories and the release date on you. you even if you uh, let go and you let it go full screen, you can see the box art and the cartridge art. And then right to left changes your system. So beautiful stuff. Very user friendly. This image is great not only for that emulation station, but also the attract mode. If you want to go back into emulation station, just hit start on your controller. Go to reboot to emulation station. In conclusion, really liking this one. I think the 128 is a great value, and I think most people are going to want to go after it. So a new 128 running RetroPie 4.4 with this massive collection of scripts and games, a lot of people are going to like that. Now, a couple caveats here. Uh, one is they need to re-release it with a little bit smaller of a file size. And uh, two, the uh, loading screen still has those strippers in it, which is fine. I'm totally fine with that. Uh, I just wish that um, it was not enabled by default. But really easy to do. What I recommend people is just go hook on your network and delete the splash screen or just disable the splash screens. You can, dis you can delete them through your network under the splash screens folder and just delete them or replace them or do that. With all that said, though, I'm going to have to give this one an A, especially once it's re-released with the smaller file size. So with all that said, that's what I think. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.